Hello everybody. Good evening, everyone. Can can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. The meeting the meeting will please come to order. Hello. Today is Thursday, June the second. I am. Trippy Congo, president of Wilmington City Council. On behalf of all of my council colleagues, just like to thank everyone for joining us this evening. I do want to apologize in advance for my, uh, my video. I'm still trying to get it to, to work. I did see that Councilman Johnson was, in, was on the other side of, he was on the attendee portion. Was he, was he able to be moved over? Mr. President, we have moved them over. Okay, all right, thank you. Just as a reminder for anyone who would like to give public comment, there's a Google form sign up link in the chat. For anyone who would like to speak, public comment will take place after non legislative business. We will begin with having an open prayer, opening prayer by Akira Granado. Heavenly Father, we have assembled to handle the affairs of our city. As we do so, we ask for your guidance and understanding. We pray that our city reaches a place of peace and safety. Keep us out of harm's way and bless those who are in authority. Let respect be key in all our endeavors. Amen. 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 This time we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God. Visible, under God. And liberty and justice yes, for all. Yes, yes. Sir, please call the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Present. Councilwoman Darby. Councilwoman Oliver. Present. Councilwoman Harley. Councilwoman Fields. Present. Councilwoman McCoy. Here. Councilman Johnson. Here. Councilman Field. Present. Councilwoman Cabrera. Present. Councilman Mills. Present. Councilman Spadola. Present. Councilwoman Walsh. Here. President Congo. Here and Councilwoman Harley did ask to be excused this evening. Thank you, President Congo. That's 11 present and two absent. Um, excuse me, Mary Bell, don't forget what I had told you, please. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we have the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Minutes of the previous meeting. 
May 19, 2022, City Council Madam Regular Session virtually with remote participation on the above date at 6.30 p.m. President Ernest M. Congo II presiding. The opening prayer was done by Kiara Bernardo, Deputy City Clerk. The Pledge of Allegiance was recited by City Council. The following members responded to the call of the roll. I move the minutes be accepted as written. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that the minutes be accepted as written on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, motion carried. This time we'll have committee reports. May 12, 2022, President Members of Council, City of Wilmington, ladies and gentlemen, we are Community Development and Urban Planning Committee by virtual meeting with remote participation to most referred ordinance number 22022 entitled, in order to authorize and approve a one year extension of contract 22004 LI between the City of Wilmington and RNA Contractors LLC for vacant property services, have given this ordinance careful study and recommend Council Bonnet accordingly. Respectfully submitted. Those members present, Councilwoman Cabrera, Councilwoman McCoy, Councilwoman Fields, Councilwoman Darby, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilman Nathan Field, and Councilman Spadola. I move the committee report be received, recorded, and filed. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that the report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion carried. May 23rd, 2022, we, your Public Works and Transportation Committee, by virtual meeting with remote participation to who was referred ordinance number 22018 entitled, in ordinance to amend chapter 13 of the city code to increase civil penalties for commercial establishments committing health and sanitation violation. Have given this ordinance careful study and recommend council vote on it accordingly. Respectfully submitted. Those members present, Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Nathan Field, Councilwoman Brigida Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilwoman Walsh. I move this committee report be received, recorded, and filed. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried out. I would also like to recognize Councilwoman Darby. So noted. May I move on? Yes, you may. Thank you. May 23rd, 2022, we, your Public Works and Transportation Committee, by virtual meeting with remote participation to the ones referred ordinance number 22021 entitled in ordinance to accept the dedication of a private street that extends in a northwest direction from the 2400 block of Riddle Avenue, add the street to the official city map and name the street as Riddle Avenue. Have given this ordinance careful study and recommend council vote on it accordingly. Respectfully submitted those members present, Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Nathan Field, Councilwoman Brigida Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilwoman Walsh. I move this committee report be received, recorded, and filed. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that that report be received, recorded, and filed on question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Sorry, is that a motion carry? Yes, motion carry. Thank you. May 23rd, 2022, we, your Public Works and Transportation Committee by virtual meeting with remote participation to was referred ordinance number 22024 entitled, in ordinance to authorize and approve an extension of contract 20011PW, so or maintenance between the City of Wilmington and Brandywine Construction Company, Inc. I've given this ordinance careful study and recommend council vote on it accordingly, respectfully submitted. Those members present, Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Nathan Field, Councilwoman Brigida Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent with leave, Councilwoman Walsh. Move this committee report BBC, recorded and filed. Second. It's been 
2022, we, your Public Works and Transportation Committee, have our meeting with remote participation to us for ordinance number 22025 entitled an ordinance to authorize and approve an electricity procurement contract starting in fiscal year 2023. I've given this ordinance careful study and recommend Council vote on accordingly. Respectfully submitted those members present Councilwoman Oliver, Councilwoman Gray, Councilman Nathan Field, Councilwoman Brigida Fields, Councilman Spadola, President Congo, absent Whitley, Councilwoman Walsh. I'm, I move this committee report BBC recorded and filed. Second. Second. This has been properly moved and seconded that that report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. That completes the treasurer's report, Mr. President. Excuse me, the committee reports. This time we have our treasury report. Thank you. June 2nd, 2022. Total investment $456,733,978.40. Total cash on hand $12,274,374.27. Grand total $469,008,352.67. Submitted by Dwayne Sims, City Treasurer. I move the treasurer's report be received, recorded, and filed. Second. If been properly moved and seconded that the treasurer's report be received, recorded, and filed on the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. I will now accept a motion to accept all non-legislative business. So moved. Second. second. It's been properly moved and seconded to accept all non-legislative business on the question. All in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> okay. Resolutions this evening. I do, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I do have a resolution to present. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> this evening, um, we're going to recognize Moms Demand Action. This is a group that has um, come together to demand action against gun violence and to have stricter gun laws. Um, this just has been an incredible year. This has been an incredible week. Um, I'm sure that it weighs heavy in our hearts what is happening in our nation. Every day I open up the news and it's another one. Um, yesterday, the day before, the children, the, the, the grocery store. I mean, there's just so many reasons why people do this, but I think the accessibility that we have to guns is part of the problem. Um, and for our council members, I know that it weighs heavy in your heart. And I know that the mothers on council, it weighs heavy in your heart. I, who am going to graduate a child this weekend, it weighs heavy on my heart to worry. And I pray things like this don't happen in Delaware, but it could happen anywhere. Uh, who knows, right? Uh, so yes, it, it hangs heavy on our hearts. So let's support this organization, wear your orange for the rest of the week. On Sunday, they have their event and they're gonna speak to this. At this point, I will read the resolution and I thank all the council members that did sign on board with the resolution. So it is presented by all of council. Whereas the first Friday in June marks National Gun Violence Awareness Day. <clears throat> the Wilmington City Council wishes to remember lives lost to gun violence honor survivors of gun-related traumas, and raise awareness about this public health crisis. And whereas every day, more than 100 Americans are killed by gun violence, and more than 230 are injured, in an average year, more than 40,000 die, and another 84,000 are wounded by guns nationally. 
Nearly eight in 10 murders and more than half of the deaths by suicide in the United States involve a firearm. And whereas Delaware has the 25th highest rate of gun-related fatalities in the U.S., an average of 111 Delawareans are killed by guns every year. Firearm deaths and injuries cost the state of Delaware an estimated $714, $714 million annually. There were 19 shootings with 23 victims in Wilmington between January 1st and May 10th, 2022. In 2021, there were 118 shootings with 149 victims and 39 homicides. And whereas gun violence prevention is more important than ever as a rate of mass shootings, ghost gun sales, and youth firearm violence remains elevated. There have been an average of 10 mass shootings per week in the United States this year alone. In the month of May, 10 lives were lost and three individuals were injured during a racist attack at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Just 10 days later, 19 children and two teachers were murdered and an additional 17 people were wounded in the deadliest school shooting of 2022. Protecting the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens works in concert with keeping guns away from people that should not have them. Whereas in January, 2013, Hadaya Pendleton, a 15-year-old African-American girl from Chicago, Illinois, was shot in the back and killed while standing with friends in the park just one week after performing at events for President Obama's second inauguration. Gun Violence Awareness Day recognizes the birthday of Hadaya Pendleton, as well as the many other victims of gun violence and their loved ones. And whereas Hadaya's friends commemorated her life by wearing orange, a color that hunters wear to be visible and prevent shooting accidents in the woods. Orange is also a color that symbolizes the value of human life. On Gun Violence Awareness Day, people are encouraged to wear orange to raise awareness and to reflect on the victims and survivors of firearms. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Wilmington that this legislative body recognizes National Gun Violence Awareness Day and encourages all citizens of Wilmington to support their community's efforts to prevent the tragic efforts of gun violence and to honor and value human lives. At this point, I know that we have members from Moms Demand um, Action on board with us. I do want to thank Ashida and Mara, the, the, the whole group. Um, it is great to be with you and to work with you. Um, at this point, anyone from the organization that would like to say a few words and then council colleagues will chime in and also um, state their you know, reactions. Thank you, Councilwoman. This is Mara Gorman. I'm the volunteer state chapter lead for Moms Demand Action in Delaware. And I wanna thank the entire city council for this resolution. And also of course the hard work of Ann McWalter and Ishida Smith who um, were fierce in making sure that everyone knew about Wear Orange and had awareness of, of this event this weekend. Um, as you all know, Wilmington is a city of families and neighbors. When one person here is impacted by gun violence, the pain extends outward into the community, leaving visible and invisible scars. Moms Demand Action stands with you in supporting survivors, fighting for systemic change and ending gun violence in all its forms in Delaware. And this weekend is a time for us to remember that and to remember all of the survivors who are our friends, neighbors, families, loved ones. Um, so we have a number of events this weekend. Um, one thing you can all do is, is wear orange tomorrow, which is Friday, which is Gun Violence Awareness Day nationally. Um, and share photos of yourself on social media with the hashtag wear orange. Um, there will also be a number of buildings illuminated orange in Wilmington, um, in Rodney Square, on Market Street, and the Hyatt at the Riverfront. Um, and we have an event on Sunday afternoon at Trinity Episcopal Church on North Adams Street at three o'clock, honoring um, survivors and um, you know, and holding them up and remembering the names of people who we have lost in our community. So I'm very grateful um, for this recognition and I look forward to continuing to work with you all to improve things in Wilmington and in the state of Delaware. Thank you, Mara. Uh, thank you, I see Councilwoman Walsh, do you have your hand raised? 
and also Councilman Johnson. I'm sorry, Mr. President, did you say me? Yeah, I see you have your hand raised. I, I did, I didn't know whether the speakers were going to speak first. Um, the only thing I wanted to say that we in this country should be so, so ashamed of is that the number one death rate in our country for those between the ages of one and 19 is gunshot. And that includes um, those that are accidental shootings and those that are suicide. And yes, the argument can be made that if the gun wasn't in the house or if the gun wasn't readily accessible to the person that accidentally shot someone or themselves or the person who committed suicide, um, we need to take a long, hard look at guns. Uh, the things that are in our constitution right now have nothing to do with the way we live today. And the, um, considering what other countries, if you look at what Canada is doing right now in response to what is going on in our country, not their own country, our country, we shouldn't be ashamed of ourselves not to step up to the plate. I thank everyone for their hard work on this subject. And I wish each and every member of this organization the very best. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, C Councilman Johnson. Uh, I would like to first thank uh, Mara, who I've known for years, uh, and Ann uh, for continuing their tireless work. Um, as you know, working in this arena is not uh, easy, it's difficult. Um, and you know, this is a big conversation, uh, obviously. This is on gun violence in the mind. It should be on the mind of each and every council member every day. I know it weighs heavily on me as I've worked on this subject for many years. Um, even when I worked in the city of Wilmington Law Department, I worked on uh, gun violence uh, prevention activities and, and worked with every town and, and just try to find a, a path forward. And, um, you know, I think we, we, you know, as city leaders, we have to be done with talk. We have to take action. Um, I think one of the tangible actions, and we're going to hear more about this, is that we need to support SD3, which is Mom Command Action, um, pushing for the permitting bill. We only have until June 30th to pass it. So, you know, this will, 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 will put a significant debt in the illegal guns in the city. Um, and it's something that should have passed a long time ago. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but we need the full court press to push for legislation. Because at the end of the day, as a city, our hands are tied in regards to gun law. Now, we do have a big say in gun violence prevention programming, which we're going to, um, working with Akil Shirelle and others, we're going to be talking more about that soon. But in terms of laws, we do need our, our colleagues in Dover. And so um, we need decisive action. And from the council, we have to push the state because, unfortunately, Delaware still is one of many states where, you know, large magazine capacity weapons assault weapons and, and, and those various uh, uh, machines of war are allowed in Delaware um, and only some states have banned them. So, you know, we need to come together um, after we get to June 30th, get SC3 passed, but we got to stand there with Miles Demand Action, more than just words at meetings, to stay in with their policy meetings and work to push our state legislators because if they're not going to do it, we need to find people who will do it in Dover because I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sure many of our colleagues are. Enough is enough, enough talk about thoughts and prayers and this and that. This is the essential uh, issue that's holding our city back. The, the gun violence and trauma has been there in the studies. And so we need to step up. So I thank Mara. I get very emotional about this as we all are, but I thank them, those ladies every day for what they do and, and the men who work in the trenches because they make it and they push us. But, um, you know, we, we got to take action once and for all. Um, um, and I would, you know, we have to make sure at least in Delaware, forget about the national laws. We need to pass the laws in Delaware starting to June 30th and then starting again in January. We got to push Dover to be better. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Oliver. Yeah, thank you, um, President Congo. Um, I just, not going to hold um, hold up everybody, but um, I just appreciate with um, Maria, Lord, um, um, Bridget, everybody. I just appreciate what everybody is doing and keep up the good work. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilman Shields. Yes, thank you, Council President. I just wanted to say, um, job well done, ladies. I'm at work. I'm not going to say ladies, but <laughs> um, the organization um, continue to do the good work that you do, um, and know that you have council support. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Walsh. Do you do you do you want another comment? I see your hand is raised. Yeah, no, I don't. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Cabrera, any final words? Um, I just wanna say that I hope that, you know, we keep everyone in prayer, but we need to do more than just pray and remember and have our thoughts with folks that the time is here to take action. And even here in Delaware, we have support from our federal delegation that maybe we need to go to adjoining states and start, you know, helping those folks out with organizations, with letter writing and whomever is willing to hear, <clears throat> we have to do better uh, as a country. We are the only country that has these outrageous uh, gun numbers. Um, so with that, I, again, you know, pray for the victims, pray for their families. Here in our own city, we see a lot of life lost because of the shootings um, and the access to guns. And of course, all the other things related around that. Um, but we do have to do better as a society. And I thank Moms Demand Action and all the folks that are out there working hard uh, to bring this to the forefront. And, um, you know, I hope that we have a moment of silence at the end of the meeting to remember those victims. Um, I thank you. And um, let's take this let's take this topic real serious. It, it's time. We need change. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Are there any other council members with presentations? Yes. Um, yes, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to call on parent plan hood first. If uh, we have Ms. Ruth or someone from there on the line. If there's we're any, bringing her, we're bringing her over right now, okay. uh, Councilwoman. If not, I don't do them if they're not on the line. Looks good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we forget it's a screen, not a mirror. Right, right. That's what I was you caught me. <laughs> okay, Miss Roof on the line. I am on the line. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, sponsors, all, all of council members and Councilwoman Oliver, whereas it's the sense of city council to honor our individual groups who have demonstrated outstanding achievement and they're deserving of recognition and acknowledgement. Um, council member Oliver would like to acknowledge Parent Planhood of Wilmington, Delaware. Whereas Parent Planhood was founded in 1916 with a mission to ensure all people have access to the care and resources that's needed to make informed decisions about their bodies, their lives, and their futures. The organization will operate under the administration of Parent Planhood of Delaware is now leading, leading provider, higher quality, affordable care, collectively Parent Planhood nationally network in the country's largest provider of sexual health education and fully planned services. And whereas through the vehicle Parent Planhood Action Network and the Parent Planhood Action Fund and the organization champions policies that expand access to medical accuracy care and education, its members also play a role in informing decision making and the public about potential impact on, of legislation on those who are most vulnerable. And whereas the organization has been at the forefront of mobilizing resources, Pam Panhood of Wilmington is engaged in an extraordinary effort to provide guidance to families in need as the country awaits the final decision in the United States Supreme Court case, Dobbs versus Jack Jackson Women's Health Organization, a case who a case whose outcome could overturn the land bank, the landmark of Roe versus Wade. Decision substantially alters women's access to reproductivity care. And now there be it resolved by the Council of the City of Wilmington would like to appreciate their dedication and commitment to improving the quality of life for Wilmington's residents. Um, Ms. Um, Ruth, would you like to say a few words? I would, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for recognizing us. Um, it, it just really means a lot to me that you would recognize the work we do. And believe me, it's not lost on me that on one hand, 
we're talking about Second Amendment rights and how difficult it is to even put any restrictions on it. And then now we're talking about women and body autonomy and how easy it is to take that away. And that's the world we're living in right now. Right now we have 26 states poised to overturn Roe and um, make abortion, if not um, very restricted, completely unavailable to millions of women in our country. Uh, the good news I can tell you about Delaware is that Delaware has codified Roe and we have overturned some of the very difficult criminal code issues that would have um, made abortion very difficult to provide in our state. Um, so we have that going for us um, unless the federal government puts forth legislation that outlaws um, abortion altogether. So right now we're okay. Um, but Planned Parenthood in particular, we get known for abortion only, and that's 4% of what we do. And we proudly provide abortion services because we know people need that. One in four women in your lifetime will have had an abortion. And so while we, while we sit back in our armchairs and decide what's an okay abortion and what's a not okay abortion, one in four women have made this very difficult decision. But the rest of the things we do are really trying to help people plan if, when, and how many kids they wanna have. And so we proudly provide that in Wilmington. We have served hundreds of thousands of patients since we've been around, which is almost 90 years now here in Delaware. And, um, and I can tell you that between birth control, STI testing, um, gender affirming care, cancer screens, uh, prenatal care, all of the kinds of things that we do. Um, we are proud to serve the people of Wilmington and no one ever gets turned away for an inability to pay. So um, we appreciate this honor. We are thankful and um, we want to work with you. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody would like to speak? Councilman McCoy. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Oliver. I just wanted to uh, state thank you, uh, Planned Parenthood, for all the education that you've actually provided to, uh, for many, um, many men and women. Mm -hmm. I've actually uh, grew up in uh, the Claymont area, so I had no, I, no idea or understanding that Planned Parenthood was a place for um, abortions because the the uh, clinic that was there was basically all about providing education and um, an understanding about reproduction for that community. So I just want to say thank you again, you know, as a teenager for uh, me being able to go there and have understanding. Uh, I really appreciate the services that were provided. Thank you. Um, um, Maria. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add, yes, that Planned Parenthood you know, a lot of people just associate Planned Parenthood with the idea of abortions, but there's so much more that happens. That is a woman's choice if they go and they have those services at Planned Parenthood, but reproductive rights, uh, it's about being able to have accessibility to birth control um, and affordability just to get your yearly exams. I remember going to Planned Parenthood to have my yearly gynecological exams when I didn't have insurance and I paid on a sliding fee scale I paid out of pocket I was able to afford it and you know you look at women especially minority women and people in low income you know it's about accessibility so you know when you're trying to shut things down the services that are being provided you're denying those services to communities that need it and in many cases Planned Parenthood is among the community accessible to people in the community so you, you know, if you don't believe in abortion, that's fine. Don't condemn the organization because they do, because there's a lot of other services that they provide. Um, so I want to thank you for the work that you have done uh, for the services I received when I needed them, um, you know, in my earlier years and the education and the prevention. It's not just it's STDs too. There's a lot that, that Planned Parenthood does. I mean, the, the help with HIV and just preventing STDs and, and that education, that education uh, that is so important um, that the community receives. So thank you for that and thank you for honoring them. Thank you. Uh, next, um, Councilman Johnson. Uh, again, Ruth, thank you very much as always for the work that you and the team do. 
Um, we are here ready to fight. You know, we are fortunate to be in Delaware, um, but just me kind of observing the legal landscape, um, things still look a lot different a year from now. And so we're ready and willing to stand and fight uh, to make sure we can maintain women's rights and reproductive rights and just privacy in general. So uh, we, we, we appreciate it. Um, and again, uh, we'll see what happens to the Supreme Court and Congress, but uh, we're, we're here to stand with you. And if they outlaw abortion federally, you know, we'll be fighting with you and, you know, just making sure folks in our community have access. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, um, Ruth, I'm going to echo uh, what my colleagues stated, but I, I had a personal experience um, with working with a lot of uh, young minority females um, years ago, and I used to bring them to parent plan where their parents um, trusted me to help them get birth control, to check for the STIs for um, birth control. And a lot of them didn't have insurance, you know, so it was also educational. I used to bring them up there to some of your workshops. Um, so um, that's uh, uh, and it was interesting that um, now that I'm older, I'm much more mature. When y'all had your march, some of the young ladies called me. I was like, Miss Al, you going to go march with me in the, in the um, parent plan home march? I'm like, huh? But they remember going to parent plan. So it was like, how could I say no? And it was so, I mean, it was so overwhelming that they remember they're grown now and they have their own kids. And they actually called me, uh, three of them called me and they all, they're all still good friends. Some of them still live in certain communities. And um, in the Northeast area and they had their own kids and they called me and I was like, okay, I'll meet y'all up there. So I was up there in the March um, <laughs> standing with them in solidarity because they remember me taking them and a lot of them had their own children now, but they just was up there for the, um, just for the education. I mean, they, one of the girl is a nurse now at Christiana Hospital. One is a, 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 a aide in one of the schools and the other one works at Delaware Park. So they're all grown and mature. So mm -hmm. I, I just believe and the individual should have the right, females um, should have the right to do what they need to do with their own bodies. Who are, who are they to judge? So I just want to thank you. And um, I just appreciate all the work that your organization does um, for just educating our youth and just females and males, as um, Councilman Maria said, you know, I mean, just as far as the age, words can't explain the work that y'all have done. So I just wanted to take a moment to um you know, acknowledge you. Um, Councilman Darby. Yes, thank you. I also want to acknowledge Planned Parenthood and thank them for the work that they're doing in the community. Um, the rally you were just talking about was actually planned in conjunction with Black Mothers in Power, um, which is an organization that I founded around Black maternal health care with Delaware Now, also with the ACLU and other reproductive justice groups throughout the state of Delaware. So it wasn't just a Planned Parenthood rally, um, but it was about um, talking about reproductive justice rights and women's rights in the state of Delaware and throughout the nation and what we're facing now in regards to um, abortions being attacked and not considered women's rights um, on a federal level, but you know, on a state level, we're really, I feel like in the state of Delaware, we're um, pretty much protected and we're good. However, we need to also be mindful that Planned Parenthood needs funding. So as a council, we need, if we're here recognizing Planned Parenthood, we also need to be going to the state to ask them to fund Planned Parenthood, right? So I don't want to do um, recognition for recognition's sake, but actually put an action to it where we need to have funding for Planned Parenthood um, for people to have access to abortions in regards to funding, in regards to transportation, in regards to making sure appointments are not too far out so that people are able to get the procedures that they want. So those things are all important when we're talking about reproductive justice, we're talking about um, maternal care, um, which is very connected to abortion rights. Um, so I just wanna say thank you, Ruth, for the work that you guys are doing. Um, they are part of a reproductive justice coalition with a group of people who are doing reproductive justice rights throughout the state of Delaware. Um, so I, I just want to make that clear because the rally, a lot of us put a lot of work in. So it was not just a Planned Parenthood rally, um, but it was a rally of reproductive justice groups who came together throughout the state to make that happen um, to support abortion rights for women. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, um, I didn't read that part. Um, I don't know if, well, yeah, I'm well aware of everybody, all the organizations. I was just honoring them because the young ladies who I supported back in the day called me regarding that. So I'm very aware of what's going on. And also I would like to make note that um, some council members have been, have had a Zoom call regarding supporting um, Parent plan who financially, so we won't that won't be remiss either. But thank you, Miss Fu, because we have some other things to go on, and I'll be back. I'll be in touch with you as usual. Thanks again. I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Um, next, we have um, our friend um, Miss Tina Betts. Miss Tina Betts is she on the line? Is Miss Tina Betts on the bring her over right? right. Right now, Councilwoman. Thank you so much. Hi, how are you? How are you, Tina? How are you doing? Doing good, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, I just uh, like to take a minute, and this is all from all the council and myself, uh, just to let, make a little note that uh, I had to twist Tina's arm to come on here because she's not one to accept uh, accolades, but um, I beg Tina just to, you know, for us, for her to allow us to honor her with just a small token because she does so much uh, for our community, for our city. And I mean, just the work you do is phenomenal. So I'm not further ado. Um, this is from Council for All the Council and Xanthia Oliver. And whereas it's the Census City Council to honor individuals and organizations who have demonstrated outstanding achievement and deserving of recognition and acknowledgement, Tina Betts is one of those individuals. And whereas earned a bachelor's in liberal studies from Boston University and studied pre-law at Murray College in North over and Andover, Massachusetts for decades, Ms. Betts has been an architect of many events and activities that gives the city of Wilmington its unique flavor. Under the leadership and director of cultural affairs, she has coordinated and secured funding for key celebrations throughout the city, including DuPont Clifford Brown Jazz Festival, Martin Luther King Jr. Day Community Celebration, the city's Independence Day Celebration, and Arts on the Town, and many more. And whereas she has a relationship builder, whereas she is a relationship builder who has developed numerous projects that have become hallmarks in Wilmington cultural arts portfolio. Wilmington's children culture, the Wilmington's festival, Clifford Brown, Clifford Brown year around concert series, and the city's first and only theater dedicated to independent films and filmmaking and filmmakers theater north at Nemours, all of credit of the vision of her work. And whereas Ms. Betts is not the only, is not only a supporter of the arts, but accomplishments artist of her own rights. She is a classical trained singer who is highly sought at the vocalist. She's also talented at, she's also a talented actor who has performed in leading roles. Delaware Symphony Orchestra and the first state ballet theater and took part in vocal assemblies in the Copeland Promise of Living production, and so many more. And whereas the Arts Association throughout the region have benefited from her expertise, I'm sorry, and has benefited from her expertise, including National Endowment for the Arts of Pennsylvania Council of Art, Mid-Atlantic Art Foundation, Pennsylvania Artists, on tour, Delaware Division of Arts and New Jersey Council of Art. And now that and now there be it resolved, be now there be it resolved by Council of the City of Wilmington that this council is pleased to commend Tina Betts for her dedication, extraordinary contributions to the and the artist and cultural character of the city of Wilmington. And Tina, I don't want to get emotional, but I love you so much. And thank you for always having an ear for me. I can call Tina and talk about so many things. When I'm off the clock, she has an ear for me. So I just like to, you know, uh, bow to you and thank you. Um, I don't know whose hand was up first. Um, Councilwoman Loretta Walsh. Thank you. Um, very quickly, all I wanted to say about Tina Betts is 
she is probably one of the best hires the city of Wilmington has ever made. Thank you, Tina. Nobody will ever understand how much work and love you've ever poured into this city. Um, on a personal level, I've watched you do this over the last 30 years. I appreciate it. And I appreciate that people long after we're all gone is going to remember the name Tina Betts. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman. Well said. Um, I'm just going down the line. Next side, uh, Yolanda McCoy. Thank you, uh, Councilman Oliver. Ms. Tina, <laughs> I just want to say congratulations. I know that this is well-deserved. My relationship may not be as long as uh, some of these other council people, but since we've met and been in contact, you have been welcoming with ideas as I have learned about all the different events that you have been behind when it comes to uh, organizing and putting putting forth. I'm just amazed. Even to the to the selection and how well the lobby is done on a regular basis. I'm like, you have me checking my own bank account to see whether or not I can afford some of these pictures. So I just want to say thank you for all that you have done and how you've actually helped to reshape what things look like in Wilmington. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have um, Nate, uh, Councilman Nathan Fields. Yes, I just want to second everything that Councilwoman Oliver mentioned. And I wanna thank Tina Betts. And I have gotten to know Director Betts through just, just this year, basically, just starting in January through a project sponsored by the Trolley Square Neighborhood Association to put up 18 murals on throughout the neighborhood. And Director Betts has essentially been a core kind of advisory part of our team and has been very generous with their time and, and support and in giving good suggestions of things to do and maybe more importantly, things not to do in terms of running a good public art project based on all of the lessons that she's learned. And she's been very generous in sharing her time and wisdom. And we are very appreciative because we've, we've taken all of her advice and so far the project is going very smoothly. Thank you, Councilman Fields. <clears throat> and you know you're important anytime he says something. Uh, <laughs> next is Council uh, Member um, Al Mills. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to echo everything that my colleagues are saying. Miss um, Tina, truly love what, what you have done and continue to do in our city, not just for the art, but also for the children. I, I mean, being an artist, I, I am so thankful for everything you do. Every time I look up and see the children on a flyer, you have the children involved in so many different things. And I appreciate that as an artist and our, I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of our city. Thank you, Councilman Mills. Uh, next we have um, Councilman Maria Cabrera. Yes, I'm not gonna repeat what others have said. I'm gonna talk about the fact that this is the woman who, she just keeps on coming back to cultural fairs and twisting and turning things and always producing a fabulous show and outdoing herself from the previous years. I remember uh, when I came in to the cultural affairs office as the events coordinator, this was after Tina Betts and looking at the notes and the things that she did then and being able to carry on and continue to grow those events. And then she okay. leaves, comes back again and she's back again. So obviously you're doing something right. Uh, that you are the most thought of after person when it comes to um, cultural fairs. And also want to say it's great when, um, cause she's a package deal, you know, she comes with a fat <laughs> ricks and those wonderful ribs and food. So we got to also uh, acknowledge that, but she is a wonderful person, a wonderful mother. And uh, we're so lucky to have you here in our city. And I echo that that gallery looks amazing every time we walk through there. Thank you, Miss Tina Betts. You are loved and my best to your husband. Okay, next we have the Honorable uh, Ms. Tina Betts. Um, I am emotional, which makes it really difficult for me to say anything. I am deeply touched um, by this. Um, there is nothing that I've done that has turned out well that I've done alone. Um, I've always had many good friends around me to support and to move forward, um, you know, any ideas um, that 
uh, may come to the table. Um, you know, sometimes life feels like it's piling on, you know? And um, this past year has felt a lot like that. You know, you feel like you're at the bottom of the pile and you can't breathe because life is just piled on. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you feel like peeling away all of that pressure going off because of the type of recognition that um, city council has decided to honor me with tonight. So I say thank you to all of you. You are all my good friends. I look forward to serving you and the city the best I can. Um, you know, recognizing that I can't be everywhere all the time. I'm ex this is my grandson in the background watching something on TV, by the way, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, but I do, I really want to try to do my best. And you can depend on that, that it will always be my best. Thank you all very, very much. I'm so deeply touched. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ms. Betts. And we love you very much. And God bless you. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, that will be all, Councilman President, uh, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do any other council members have any presentations? If not, I would like to uh, recognize Reverend Dr. Clifford Johnson uh, for his retirement from Shiloh Baptist Church. There is a sympathy resolution for Thomas only from Councilwoman Fields. Uh, she would also rec like to recognize St. Saint, Saint Paul Catholic Church for their 150th anniversary. Uh, from Councilwoman Harley, there is a sympathy rec recognition for Raymond Grayson. And also uh, she'd like to recognize D Dyson Wilmoth Sanders. Uh, Councilwoman Oliver would also like to recognize Shade Fest and sympathy recognitions uh, from Councilwoman Oliver for Benny Zip Young, Juquan Davis, and Wilbert E. Norman Jr. And at this time, we will move uh, also on uh, recognitions uh, for the Goodwill of Delaware and Delaware County Incorporated from Councilwoman Oliver. Uh, recognition for Jose Berrios, code enforcement from uh, uh, LNI, who is retiring, I believe, tomorrow from Councilwoman Cabrera and sympathy recognition for Mary P. Bond from Council Member Darby. At this time, we will move to public comment. As a friendly reminder, there is a Google form sign up link in the chat for anyone who has not signed up and would still like to speak. The time limit is uh, you have three minutes. When it gets to around a minute or 30 seconds left, I will give you a friendly re reminder. Um, we probably will need to extend public comment, and if need be, we will uh, vote on that in about 10 minutes. Uh, first, we have Mr. D. Marquis Hall. Did I unmute myself? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for joining us. All right. Good evening. Um, thank you, Council. I want to thank Councilwoman Oliver for honoring Mrs. Betts. Mrs. Betts, she's so humble, and she didn't talk about everything that she's been through this year. She didn't talk about the details of the loss that she suffered, but that means a lot. And you know, I heard it in her voice. I um, I'm grateful to Mrs. Betts for what she's been able to do over on the east side, what it is that she's been able to do over on the north side throughout the city and how when I call her up to help with something, whether it's something that the community is responsible for, what the community has let go, or what the city, even the police, are responsible for damaging, she's, uh, she's able to get it fixed up really quick. She put somebody out there to do the work. But I wanted to talk about the work that I don't think is being done, I, I know isn't being done as well as it could be to 
take care of the most vulnerable people, the folks that are homeless on uh, the people that were from Adam Street that are now in the hotels that need help, real help. I wanted to make sure that we focused on making sure that they get affordable housing, that, that they get a long-term living situation, that they get out of those places where they're at, the Hope Center, where a lot of folks don't have a lot of hope anymore because of what's going on, the treatment that they're receiving. And Fairview Inn, where I've stayed, where I, I know that the conditions aren't up to par, they're not what they should be. Those people need to be put somewhere where they uh, they can live, where they can work and they can provide for themselves and they can be comfortable. So today, an organization from out of the state actually came and made noise outside of the, the city council chambers to demand some sort of respect, some sort of equality, some sort of dignity for those people. And on June 18th, the National Poor People's Campaign is converging on Washington, D.C. And we're leaving from Wilmington and hopefully five other places in the state of Delaware. And I want for everyone to go to Rally Co. and register for buses. There's, a, there's seats that you can get to go down for a moral revival at Washington, D.C., a peaceful protest, peaceful movement, a mass moral just really reckoning for the nation because we already know that some folks just are, are without any sort of sense, any sort of resolve, any sort of heart for the people. So we have to demand change and we can't do that alone. So everybody standing together is what we need. So we say forward together and not one step back. Call me at 302-354-1700 or text me for more information. Also, you can email Delaware at poorpeoplescampaign.org and you will be emailed back with more information on the Rally Co. bus reservation and this fight for change that we're all in. Keep up the good fight. Okay, thank you. So at this time, per our council rules, uh, we do have to vote to extend public comment past 7.30 and we are probably going to go past 7.30. So I will uh, accept the motion to, to extend public comment to eight o'clock. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Public comment will be extended past 7.30. Thank you. At this time, uh, we have uh, Please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Our right, Anisha Williams. Uh, Mr. President, we don't see um, Anisha Williams in there. I, there's a couple of um, phone numbers. Um, if you happen to be one of them, if you press star nine, I'll raise your hand and um, to identify yourself. Anisha Williams. Okay, we can come back to her. Maybe maybe she lost her signal. Uh, next we have Stephanie Lambert. Um, we're also not seeing um, Ms. Lambert. Um, if you happen to, again, be on the um, on one of the phones, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Um, okay, we can oh, we'll move on. But, but we will circle back uh, if necessary. Next, we have the initials SM. SM.
Uh, please raise your hand if you uh, if you signed up as SM. Okay, we'll move on. Next, we have Cheyenne Miller. Hi, my name is Cheyenne Miller. I'm in the seventh district. I work with the Metropolitan Women's and Urban League with the uh, Building People Power campaign, which helps with the Homes campaign. And um, I'd like to give public comment on several issues that are in um, the agenda today. One, we'd like to show support for uh, the Black maternal health bills that are being um, proposed through resolution for city council. Um, we're proud that Black Mothers in Power has been supporting this legislation that will help Black mothers and mothers across the state. And we hope that city council will um, pass those resolutions and make sure we get some of that, those law laws hopefully supported so that they can pass through the General Assembly. The other thing we'd like to uh, give comment on is that there is a um, ordinance that is going to be hopefully introduced tonight discussing vulnerable families being exempted from having their water um, cut off. So the Homes Campaign has been working with the, um, with the uh, city of Wilmington as best as we can to ensure that people have access to the resources that will help them not get their water cut off. But we do appeal to city council to pass legislation that will stop these vulnerable families from having their water cut off. A lot of people are struggling to pay their water bills because of inflation and city council did just vote to raise water rates. Um, and so we know that there are some families who are struggling more than others and simply are unable to pay their water bill and living in poverty should not make it so that you have no access to water. Um, and so we are just saying in support of that, we urge city council to ensure that vulnerable family members, people who are elderly, people who have kids under five and people who are living with uh, disability do not have to worry about the getting their water cut off, although no one should have to worry about getting their water cut off. Um, the last thing I'd like to give public comment on uh, is related to the Adam Street um, residents who were put out of their home because their home was condemned by LNI. We do believe that it is important that the city um, administration specifically was able to respond to the safety issues with the Adam Street um, apartments. However, the way in which the city administration went about doing that showed that there was not a regard for the residents that lived in those places. And so we are thankful that the city council will pass hopefully a resolution that will provide funds to help those families. But we also urge that city council and also the administration works to ensure that this process is changed in all. We hope that um, you know, LNI will really make some real considerations around how they go about informing families of their rights and informing um, the state and state agencies and nonprofits of how they can help make sure a family who has to leave a house that is condemned can find a place so that they can rest their head and be safe. So thank you for giving the chance to give public comment. Have a good day. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you for everything that you and your team do for our city. Um, next we have uh, Brad Chatham's Chatham's. Hello. Hi, Brad. Is anyone able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, there we go. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, no, I'm doing great there. Um, well, I guess, first of all, I, I mean, I'm in agreement with a lot of the things we were discussing tonight. Um, first, I, I just, there's, there's a couple things that are a little bit confusing to me. I, I, I was waiting for some of the bigger issues. Like I noticed the, uh, the streets collapsing there, and I wanted to hear what we were talking about that. And it seems like there's a lot of federal issues that are being discussed. Um, there's people talking about Roe v. Wade. Um, you know, the, the Planned Parenthood stuff going on. I thought this was a city council meeting. Um, but I, I'm just I'm just confused over the whole, a lot of things really. 
Um, you know, we were talking about guns at one point, and I just want to know what guns, what legislation everyone's talking about, because I agree that change is, is definitely needed. But I don't hear anyone with any ideas. It's just a whole bunch of we need to go to rally and 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 it's it just doesn't seem like anyone it seems like people are afraid to get specific on this issue. And on to the city issues, you, you know, it, it's just a mess out here. It's just a real mess. We got the whatever that street is there just collapsed. Apartment buildings condemned now. There's a, there's a ton of more homeless people flooding out into the streets. And it's just a mess. I can't even get to work with all this construction going on. And then I take a side street and I'm getting bombarded with homelessness. They're kind of coming up trying to clean my car. And the city isn't big enough for, for this kind of, we don't have an infrastructure to deal with, with these people walking around in our street, you know? And I, and I want to hear what city council is going to do to address that. I don't care about federal issues talking about Planned Parenthood. And, um, you know, we got city councilors talk, talk, talking about Roe v. Wade, talking about someone, Christopher with an F was talking about if abortion gets out lot federally, which doesn't even make sense. So you guys are talking about federal issues you don't even understand. And I'm, and I'm sick of it. I'm getting real sick of it. You know, there's homeless people shitting and pissing. We got, it's just disgusting, you know, and I, I apologize for my language, but the, the city needs to be cleaned up. You know, the things, the things I've seen just this year alone, it, it's, it's terrible. I, I, my dog came home the other day, he had needles sticking out of his paws. It's, it's terrible. And, um, I just, I'll just end on that note, I guess. I'm disgusted with this city. Disgusted. Okay, thank you for your, for your feedback. Um, please give us a call if you'd like to talk to any of your council members directly at 576-2140, 302-576-2140. Next we have Mr. Tony Dunn. Thank you, uh, President Trippi, and also uh, greetings to city council members at large. Um, my reason for calling, uh, while just hearing that uh, disappointed uh, community uh, city person speak almost took my <laughs> thoughts away. But I want to first thank uh, city council uh, representative Darby and also President Trippi uh, for your support in having, recognizing Mrs. Beatrice Dunn and her hard work that she had performed here in Wilmington, Delaware uh, before her leaving um, and to her final resting place. And uh, I just wanna say for those city council members who may not know Mrs. Dunn, uh, Mrs. Dunn uh, was a Wilmington Tony. She uh, worked besides the likes of Hicks Anderson, uh, Hazel Plan, Al Plan, uh, Representative, uh, uh, who's that? Uh, a couple of the representatives. She, she worked beside uh, Kingswoods, she worked besides housing authorities, uh, projects as well as the uh, scatter site project. She also worked in the public school system. Uh, my mother was one that gave everything that she could possibly give to the city and to the state of Delaware. I mean, when it came to children, she would take other people's children, even though we were in subsidized housing, she would jeopardize boarding other people's children so they wouldn't be in the streets. I don't care where we live. We live from the south side, west side, the east side, north side, everywhere we live. My mother would take on other people's children 
to make sure they had housing and they fed and their babies was taken care of and educated. And I hope that city council will join in with Representative Darby and support her resolution to have the uh, Concord Avenue, Monroe Street um, circle donated to Mrs. Dunn for her hard work here in Wilmington. Thanks city council once again, thank President uh, Trippy Congo and Representative Darby. I really appreciate you. So does the family and friends of Mrs. Dunn. Okay, thank you. And our final speaker will be Brianna Henderson. Um, hi, yes. Good evening. Thank you guys for allowing us to just ultimately comment. Just coming on, I think the biggest thing that pulled me in was just to see the agenda around um, maternal health and ultimately as a natural person and individual in Wilmington, Delaware, who is currently pregnant and dealing with that, um, not only has it been um, ultimately a trial in itself, although I'm highly educated, I have a master's in educational psychology, but due to the demographics, the resources in itself are not there, but it's been a journey and I'm glad that um, Ms. Darby is on here as well and hope to see that there is some type of a forum for women of minority, I had to navigate throughout this entire time of being pregnant and, you know, gaining a doula for educational purposes and making sure that I have a support because as it stated, Delaware is the smallest state, but it's the highest in mortality rate. That's concerning. I am a African-American female. And of course I face bias going into the healthcare system. Not only that, I'm carrying twins. So ultimately, outside of me being healthy, I'm still labeled, of course, high risk. Statistically, I'm facing, again, more discrimination. And so ultimately, as an individual, I work with children on a spectrum as a consultant. I do hope to see that the process of receiving support SNAP is not as monotonous in, in Medicare and Medicaid. Because that in itself, when I inquired, it's become monotonous and tedious. And under urgency, I needed that support just with unemployment, ultimately. So I just want to highlight how I do hope there is reform. And Ms. Darby, you know, has highlighted the need for African-American women. Because who, when you go into the system, <laughs> if you're not African-American female, you have to keep it in the back of your mind. You can die due to the healthcare practitioners bias against you they already have a, a, a bias that ultimately we can withstand more pain and or some of our concerns are disregarded i had a practitioner say to me and my mother oh yeah you're going to receive an ultrasound with saline you know salt water do not insult my intelligence my lexicon is very large and i'm educated but due to the demographics i'm already subject to being perceived as if I know nothing or not as much. And I just would like to say, like, I really would like to see that reform. And I'm glad that Ms. Darby is on board because it has been, again, a frightening journey. So think of the individuals who have no knowledge in education. The same way that, you know, Planned Parenthood is there for individuals to learn, um, you know, sexual health and that education, there should be more education around birth because, Women go in the healthcare system thinking, this is the only option for me. Without a doula, do I think that I would have been subjected to more bias in testing? Of course. If I was not able to advocate for myself, of course. Even now, I'm still advocating for myself at 35 weeks pregnant with twins, who was told, oh, you won't surpass 26 weeks from a, a Caucasian practitioner, <laughs> which is like, come on. I'm now 35, 35 weeks with twins and, and we're doing fine. But again, for the individuals who know not of the education and the importance of doulas and birth education and support and how to, how to access resources in Wilmington, Delaware. And again, just to reiterate, 
to read that we are the smallest state, but this is the fifth largest when it comes to the like infancy and mortality rate for us. That has me scared to go into the healthcare system. And I'm glad I'm able to advocate, but this has been a real journey. And ultimately, I just hope that there is going to be that change for women because ultimately, again, for somebody who's worked in education, I've always worked around children. I started volunteering over there at Kingswood when I was younger. I went to pursue my education at, at, at HBCU and a PWI. I graduated from Temple University. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to let them know that I'm highly educated. I shouldn't. Ha- I shouldn't have to, but I do because ultimately, the demographics in itself have me looked at as oh, she's another statistic, and I do have concern with that. And ultimately, the the reason why I also jumped on here today is because not only have I been trying to contact city council since two thirty this morning in regards to seeing about a resolution to support with not only I'm sorry I'm sorry can you hear me uh, over your time um, okay that's fine to be fair to all other public uh, that's fine um the number that you had given out will I be able to contact someone because I do have concerns regarding um a matter that happened today and that was that 576 number another doctor receptionist and a patient. 302 5762. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. At this time, we will move to legislative business. Council Member Gray. Councilmember Gray. Councilmember Darby. Yes, uh, let me bring up my email. Um, Mr. President, I have a resolution to present. Resolution 22024 in the 0174, whereas House Bill number 234 is an act to amend Title 31 of the Delaware Code to extend Medicaid coverage from the current limit of 60 days following pregnancy or postpartum to 12 months after delivery. Approximately one third of maternal deaths. I move this resolution resolution to be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by a yay and nay vote. Second. The resolution be received, recorded, filed. I don't know if it's my phone, but it sounds like it's breaking up. It's been properly moved and seconded that the resolution be received, recorded, and filed, adopted by a yay nay vote on the question. I don't know if it's my end, but you're starting to break up. So I don't know if I can, I'm able to make comment yet, President. Yes, it's been properly moved and second that the resolution be received, recorded, filed, adopted by a yay and a vote on the question. Yeah, so um, I can speak to this resolution at this point. Um, so I'm going to actually speak to pretty much all of the resolutions that's about to come forward in regards to Black maternal health care um, so that we can move through this quick. Um, but the reason why I am supporting these pieces of legislation um, in regards to Black maternal health care, State Representative Melissa Minor Brown is presenting a package of legislation to address Black maternal health care. And just to give you guys some brief background about it, um, Black maternal health care it exists in mostly countries um, where Black people or the minority, where they're having to constantly deal with historical racism and systemic racism. So the reason why Black women and Black babies are dying at higher rates or being silenced or being ignored in the healthcare system is not because we're Black, is be- not because we're Black, but it's because of our race. 
but it's because of racism that we're experiencing historically and systemically in the hospitals um, and the healthcare system that we're battling with. So this is not a poor black woman issue. This is a black woman's issue. You could be a black woman with a master's degree me um, as a lot of black women because we're the most educated group of people in this country country um but it does not matter your educational attainment your social economic background if you are a black woman you are more likely to die and more likely for your baby to die and this matters for the city of wilmington because we have the highest infant mortality rate the highest um uh, mortality rate for black women in regards to maternal care in our state and our state ranks really high compared to out of all the other states for mortality rates overall and spe specifically for black women. So those, so these legislations speak to me dearly, one as a black woman, as a black woman who's raising black girls, as a black woman who's in my community and I'm interacting with other black women who are experiencing these things. So I'm so glad that I was able to hear from Ms. Henderson on this call and as she came today, um, because I'm doing this be because of you, because of me, because of my kids, because of my ancestors. The reason why I speak so much about Black maternal health care um, is because my own personal experiences and I know what other Black women are experiencing here in the city that I grew up in, who are my friends, my aunts, my um cousins, whatever you want to call them, who are experiencing these things. Um, so this um, specific legislation is about postpartum care. Postpartum care um, uh, for Medicaid will be extended out for 12 months for all women who are pregnant to receive postpartum care and be covered through Medicaid up to um, up to a year. So this will be able to cover any medical appointments up to a year, any um, any anything that that woman needs. I mean, it's so key and important because in the postpartum stage, that's when most deaths are happening here in the state of Delaware is in that fourth trimester, as we call it, which is the postpartum stage. So it's so key and important that we have coverage for women during that stage. So that's really it for that piece of legislation. And I'll talk a little bit, a little bit more about the other pieces of legislations more in depth when we get into them, but this is really key and important to making sure um, all women, specifically Black women, are protected during the postpartum stage, which is the fourth trimester. Okay, thank you. I don't see any council members' hands raised, but I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. And if no one, no one from council, um, clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Councilwoman Fields? Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yeah. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Councilman Spadola? Councilwoman Walsh? President Congo? Yes. Maribel, yes. That's Councilwoman Fields. Thank you, Councilwoman Fields. Nine yeas and four absent. We clear the docket. Just want to remind everyone to please mute your phones. Councilmember Darby, do you have any other legislation? Yes. Um, oh gosh, let me go back to this. Um, yes, Mr. President, I have a resolution to present. Resolution 22025, Agenda 0175, whereas, whereas House Bill number 340, an act to amend Title 31 of Delaware Code relating to child and maternity mortality proposes to expand the duties of the Child Death Review Commission. I move this resolution to be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by Yang and Naval. Can we get a second, please? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by a yay-nay vote on the question. 
Yeah, so this is a, another piece of legislation, a part of, of the Mama Biz Act, which is for addressing maternal care in the state of Delaware. So this specifically is about our MMR review board. So that's the mortality, um, maternal mortality review board. I actually sit on that board as they're trying to expand in, um, um, for to have more people on there for a diverse um, voice. Um, so basically we review all the deaths of every single infant and every single um, mother who dies in the state of Delaware. So this legislation basically expands it to make sure that it's more equitable, that the board is more diverse and is more inclusive. So that's it. Okay, seeing no hands raised, um, so please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Yes, and I wanted to be a co-sponsor. President Congo, is, is that acceptable? Yes, no? yes, that's fine. Thank you. Councilwoman Darby. Yes. Councilwoman Oliver. Councilwoman Fields. Councilwoman McCoy. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yeah. Councilman Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Mills. Yes. Councilman Spadola. Councilwoman Walsh. President Kako. Yes. Eight yeas and five absent. Third adopted. You may continue, Council Member Darby. Yes, um, I have a resolution to present, Mr. President. Resolution 220026, agenda 0176, whereas House Bill number 341, an act to amend Title 31 of the Delaware Code related to TAMP, temporary assistance for needy family work requirements and maternal health requires that the state- I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by yay and nay vote. Second. It's been probably moved move and second. This resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by yay and nay vote on the question. Yeah, so this legislation basically is in regards to pregnant women who receive TANF. So TANF basically is welfare, um, where if you don't have a job, you can go to social services, you get a check um, every month. Um, however, when you get your check, you're required to do employment search. Um, you're required to come in. Well, I don't know because of COVID anymore, but you're required to go in and do workshops and training in regards to employment, and they help you get a job. We're asking that when you're um, after you have a baby that you get some time to recover um, and actually get placed into another track of probably doing some birthing workshops, birth classes um, in regards to birth, breastfeeding classes instead of being focused on trying after having the baby, being focused on two, three weeks after having the baby, trying to still try to find a job. Um, when that's not even realistic. Um, so just finding another way to deal with um, pregnant women um, after they have their baby in the postpartum stage to making sure they're getting the information in regards to pregnancy being um, in their postpartum stage and connecting them to resources during that time. So that's all this legislation is about. Yeah, I don't see any hands raised. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Councilwoman Fields? Councilwoman? Yes. Excuse me? Yes. Thank you. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yeah. Councilman Nathan Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mills? Yes. Councilman Spadola? <clears throat> Councilwoman Walsh? President Congo? Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declared adopted. 
I have another resolution to present, President. Resolution 22027, Agenda 0177, whereas House Bill number 343 proposes that the Division of Medicaid and Medical Assistance was presented plan to General Assembly by November 1, 2022, for coverage of doula services by Medicaid providers. I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by a yay and a vote. Second. That's been properly moved and second that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by a yay and a vote on the question. Yeah, so this piece of resolution, I am excited about. I have been advocating for this since 2019 when I started my nonprofit, Black Mothers in Power. We currently have a doula training program where we train Black women to become doula. It is a white woman's um, workforce in regards to like doula. So we're trying to diversify the workforce of doulas that are available. Um, so we um, graduated our first cohort. One of the things is that to get a doula, y'all, it is like $900 to $1,200 um, to have a doula. So we want to make sure that that expense is covered through Medicaid. And hopefully in the future, we can um, target the private insurances. But for right now, we're going to get Medicaid to cover the cost of doulas so that any woman that is on that has that's on Medicaid and wants a doula when they're pregnant, they have the option of getting one. So that's what this legislation is about. Doulas are non-medical professionals that work with the woman before, during, and after pregnancy. The research, CDC, all the research shows that having a doula helps to decrease the disparities that exist for minorities, Black, Latino women, um, in regards to the maternal disparities that exist. So having a doula will be able to increase, increase breastfeeding rates, decrease all the negative impacts, decrease deaths. Um, so I am like thrilled to be working with Medicaid through my nonprofit and working with State Representative Melissa Minor Brown on this piece of legislation, because this is gonna be a game changer for the state of Delaware. And we're gonna join probably four, three, three, four other states that have doula coverage under Medicaid for anyone that is pregnant. So I'm excited to present this legislation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor and Councilwoman Cabrera, you have any comments? Yes, Mr. President, I been, there's a lot of good things on the agenda and I didn't wanna speak after each one, uh, but this resolution, yes, very, very important along with the other ones. This has to do with excessive, equitable access to healthcare and services, um, especially when it comes to women and many of the minority women who don't get the necessary care or get overlooked um, through our healthcare systems. The disparities are there, the numbers prove it. Um, so thank you, Councilman Darby, for bringing forth the series of legislation uh, resolutions to support um, our General Assembly that I'm very happy to see are bringing forth this legislation for the state of Delaware. And by supporting these resolutions, it does bring attention to our city residents that this is happening in Dover and that these issues are being addressed. So I want to, you know, thank uh, Councilman Darby and all the council members that are supporting it uh, because it is very important um, and it's they're, they're good resolutions and it's good legislation in the General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Johnson. Uh, I too, uh, I could have said a mess to my colleagues in that uh, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Darby. Um, she always brings this to attention. Uh, I know she's an expert in this field and, and thank you for pushing it. Um, and I guess my only question is, you know, what can we do more? Because um, I know it's only, you know, less than 30 days before the end of session. Um, I'm hopeful this passes. Uh, knowing kind of the good old network that exists in Dover, um, you know, Black maternal health has not been at the forefront in Dover. So um, just please let us know whatever we can do as, as your colleagues to help push us over the uh, edge to, to the finish line. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman McCoy. Thank you, Mr. President. Just wanted to state that the piece of legislation are actually very uh, good. And, and I do hope that they actually go through through the state. It is something that's definitely required. And the uh, the first piece of legislation, the first few pieces of legislation is something that uh, I actually, uh, first time really getting a chance to hear about. I think they're wonderful. The doula per se though, that's actually a resolution that went through last term. So I'm just so glad that even as a packet that they're all actually going through now that the state is uh, has someone down there that's really taking this seriously and that we understand about what's going on with um, the maternal health, especially the black maternal health here in the state of Delaware. Thank you. 
Thank you. And seeing no other hands raised, clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Darby. Yes. Councilwoman Oliver. Councilwoman Brigida Fields. Yes. Councilwoman McCoy. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yeah. Councilman Nathan Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Mills. Yes. Councilman Spadola. Councilwoman Walsh. President Congo. Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declared adopted. That's the last one. Mr. President, I have a resolution to present. Resolution? Is it my last resolution? No, you got another one after this. Okay. You got two more after this. Excuse me. Resolution 22028, Agenda 0178, whereas House Bill 344, an act to amend Title 16 of the Delaware Code related to bias training for healthcare workers, was introduced to come back and internalize. I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by a yay and nay vote. Second. It's been properly moved and second that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by yay and nay vote on the question. Yeah, so this legislation is powerful too. So it, it requires that providers, healthcare providers, have to take implicit bias and racism training. Um, so one of the reasons like we're dying or facing these disparities is not because we're black, it's because of the racism we're experiencing. Um, now it's not like genetic, it's not any of those things, it's the racism we're experiencing in the healthcare system. So some of the things we want to address is the, the mindset um, and the thoughts of some of these providers. There is research that shows that there are medical students who believe that Black people feel less pain than white people, that we have less pain neurons in our body than white people, right? So there's, there's people who believe that Black people feel less pain and that we're somehow, we, we're not as human as a white person. So these things exist um, by studies and research that we're not being viewed the same. So if I walk in as a black woman into a healthcare setting or to appointment, all the implicit bias, the thoughts that just come, we all have implicit bias, right? Um, but they come and that if it, it impacts the type of treatment that all black people are getting in healthcare, but specifically for this conversation, black maternal healthcare. And I also do wanna acknowledge the prior session council session for the doula legislation last year, um, not last year, but from the last session. And I also wanna say as a council, we also can um, reach out to our state legislators to say to pass all of these legislations in the mom of this bill. And I think the city of Wilmington having the highest infant mortality rate, I think it's our job to push for funding to get a birth center in the city of Wilmington that will serve our residents so that we can decrease these disparities. But this legislation is so key and important because it will address the issues that we're having with providers who believe black women, specifically for this legislation, are somehow not fully human and we don't feel pain like everyone else and we're not being listened to. Serena Williams, for example, I wanna give to people, she is a black woman, well-known, she probably can build several hospitals, married to a white man, had a biracial child, and she almost died, right? So this is the type of things that we're experiencing on all levels. It doesn't matter how much money we make or what degree educational attainment that we have or social economic status. So that is it for this piece of legislation. Okay, I see you know the hand raised. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. Please call the for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Councilwoman Brigida Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yeah. Councilman Nathan Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Councilman Spadola? Councilwoman Walsh? President Congo. 
Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declare adopted. And council members, um, Oliver, Spadola, and Walsh did ask to be excused. Councilwoman Oliver, excuse me, who else? Spadola? Spadola and Walsh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have another resolution to present, President. Yes, you may continue. Resolution 22029, agenda 0179, whereas House Bill number 346, an act to amend Title 31 of the Delaware Code related to patient monitoring devices, removes the requirement that a pregnant patient enrolled in the state Medicaid program receive prior authorization for an automated take home blood pressure cough when the automated take home. I move this resolution be received, reported, and filed and adopted by a yay and nay vote. So this, um, let, I'm sorry. Second, I know you have a second, please. Second. It's been properly moved and second that this resolution be received, recorded, final adopted by yay and a vote on the question. Yeah, so um, with COVID, um, a lot of our appointments went virtual, hybrid, or um, where doctors are able to meet with people via, you know, virtual um, appointments. So one of the things is that they're asking for some woman to take their blood pressure at home. So um, when you have Medicaid, you have to go through an authorization process and it's taking too long for these women to get access to high blood pressure cuffs. So what they're looking to do is to get rid of the authorization process and just give these women these um, blood pressure, um, the high blood pressure cuffs so that they're able to take their blood pressure at home while they're, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and then I think the future for like a lot of medical appointments will be virtual, right? Um, so we're moving into those times. So that's what this legislation is about. Okay, so you know the hands raised. Clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Brigida Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yeah. Councilman Field? Lincoln Field? Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. President Congo? Yes. Nine yeas and, excuse me, eight yeas and Five absent. Declared adoption. Thank you. Last one. I have one more resolution, President. That's correct. Councilwoman Darby, you have one resolution and two other additional items. All right. I have, uh, Mr. President, I have a resolution to yeah. present. One moment. Resolution 22030, Agenda 0180, whereas House Bill number 385 would allow municipalities with a population of 50,000 or more to legislate regulations that are more restrictive than state law regarding the location of liquor stores and require that the Alcohol mm -hmm. Commission refuse license. I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by a yay and nay vote. <laughs> Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by Yerry mm -hmm. Nabel on the question. Yes. Yeah, so this legislation, I was so excited to see, um, and I wanted to make sure I supported it. I know um, to have Wilmington have, make decisions about um, where our liquor stores are located. I know specifically for me in the second district or Market Street, within a two block radius, we have three liquor stores and I would never want something like that to ever happen again, um, specifically th throughout the whole city of women, but specifically for me in the second district where that even that's even allowed. So for us to have a little bit more power over um, our liquor store legislations and you know the distance between them and where they can be located. I think that's that gives us a lot of power. And I know that liquor stores are a, a nuisance <laughs> to a lot of communities um, in the city of Wilmington where we know that where there are liquor stores, there's either higher like crime rates or people suffering from mental um mental health issues or people who are suffering with addictions, right? So we want to make sure that we live in a city um, that looks good, that's healthy, 
um, and that we are able as a council to make decisions about the liquor stores in our neighborhoods. So that is it. I, what I have. Thank you. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor and Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor, as many of my colleagues know from my previous work. And now that liquor stores are one of my pet peeves, obviously these problem properties, I think in my own neighborhood, I have a liquor store that's half a block, another one that's a block and a quarter, and another one that's four blocks away, but yet my nearest corner store might be three blocks away. So we live in a city where we have more accessibility to liquor stores than we have to a corner store providing food and last minute things that you might need. The accessibility is not necessary. And I think that yes, Wilmington should have its own autonomy when it comes to where these liquor stores go. Um, I'm not opposed to having the convenience of them there, but I came from Pennsylvania where to get liquor, you had to go to the state store, you know, so we didn't have that accessibility um, when I grew up in, in Pennsylvania. And I think that this does lead to a lot of the nuisance and problems that we have in our neighborhood. It's where people gather. It's where, and sadly enough, Ethan Monroe, one of my pet peeves, how many shootings, if we go down the list, have occurred on that corner? How many people have died on that corner? It, it's just not good. And sure, we can have them, but we really need to have more control over where they go. And if they're problematic, to be able to shut them down a little easier because it's really hard to get rid of them. After many, many years, and including when I first served on council, we finally acquired the liquor store at 6th and Jefferson Street, which has also been a problem. So this is excellent legislation. I'm glad that the state is looking at this and I'm glad that Wilmington is finally getting a little bit more autonomy over how we run our city, considering the problems and the issues that we have. Thank you very much. And thank you, Councilman Darby for bringing this forth. Council Member Fields. Yes, thank you, Council President. I just want to say um, I have already sent my support um, down to the General Assembly um, when this first piece of legislation came up, because in the fifth district, as you know, it's, it seems like we have a liquor store on every corner. Um, so they already know that I support them. But um, I would like to thank Councilwoman Darby for bringing it to everybody else's attention. Um, I will say that. Um, I did have uh, the opportunity to close down a liquor store on 7th, 7th and Jefferson. So um, the 5th District is moving forward to handling what we need to handle as far as getting rid of the liquor stores, get, um, and which actually disperses the crime and it slows it down. Um, so, you know, I just think it's a good piece of legislation that the General Assembly is working on, and I truly support it, and they've had my support for months, but thank you so much. Any final comments, Council Member? No final comments. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Brigida Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Nathan Field? Present. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Council, uh, President Cabo? Yes. Eight days, one present and four absent. I believe that was my last resolution. I think now I'm moving on to my order. Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. President Congo? Yes. I didn't hear what you said. Declared adopted. Thank you. Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present and call for the first and second reading. Ordinance 22026, agenda 0181, ordinance named in the Concord and Madison Triangle as the Beatrice R. Don Triangle. 
Mr. President, I move that be known as the first and second reading of the ordinance and refer to the Community Development and Urban Planning Committee. First reading of the ordinance. The ordinance being the concrete and Madison Triangle as the beaches are done triangle. Yeah, Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present. Excuse me, Councilwoman Darby, there's some feedback. You can move your ordinance now. Oh, okay. Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present and call for the first and second reading. Oh. President Congo? Yes. I think you can move 0181. A motion needs to be made with a second to the committee. Oh. Having some feedback. Can you repeat yes, your motion, someone. Councilwoman Darby, please? What committee are you referring that to? Oh, the Community Development and Urban Planning Committee. Someone can stand there, please. We need a second. Need a second, please. Second. It's been probably a second. second that be known as first and reading of ordinance and refer to community development. I can go to the next one. I'm not sure if I'm hearing. Yes, you may. Thank you. Oh, okay. Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present and call for the first and second reading. Ordinance 22027, agenda 0182, an ordinance to exempt elderly and disabled residents and residences with children under the age of five from water service disconnection or non payment of utility charges. Mr. President, I move that be known as the first and second reading of the ordinance and refer it to the Finance and Economic Development Committee. An ordinance to exempt elderly and disabled residents and residences with children under the age of five from water service disconnection for non-payment of utility charges. You can move your motion now. Does President Congo realize that he is very muffled and garbled and we can't understand him? Yes, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, much clearer. Okay, thank you. Second reading of the ordinance. Were you able to hear me? Second reading of the ordinance. Yes, Councilwoman Darby, can you please make your motion to refer to a committee, please? Thank you. Yes, um, I'm sorry, I thought I did that. That's going to the Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting. Do we need a second? Can we get a second, please? Second. Second. It's been properly moved and second that be known as the first and second reading of the ordinance referred to the Finance and Economic Development Committee. President Congo, that completes Councilwoman Darby's legislation. Uh, Council Member Fields. Oliver. Good night, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I interject? Yes, I'm going to call on you, Councilman Cabrera, to do both um, pieces for myself and Oliver and Harley. Oh, but I believe Councilman Oliver is back. 
Mr. President. Okay. Councilman Oliver. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, as you and Mary Bell already knew, I had a meeting with um, the Northeast because we had the corner store closed down over there on 23rd and Pine. It's been closed down for two days for things we were talking about tonight. So sorry about that. Um, but nevertheless, um, I have a resolution. Um, um, Mr. President, I have a resolution to present moment. Resolution 22031, Agenda 01A3, whereas Title IV, Chapter 7 of the Delaware Code prohibits the sale of alcohol after 1 a.m. And whereas the restaurant and leisure industries are amongst the most impacted by the pandemic, prolonging the operating hours for on-premises alcohol consumption can increase their potential for revenue and growth. The city of Wilmington's proximity to other large cities and the recent easing of COVID-19 restrictions presents an opportunity for the city to offer alternative- Resolution, resolution BBC recording a file adopted by the ANA vote. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by yay and a vote on the question. Yes, Mr. President, this is a resolution encouraging the General Assembly to allow City of Wilmington to expand the sales of premises of alcohol uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, this was brought uh, by CJ's group, and he's already um, had a sponsor down in Dover. So he gave me a call and asked me, um, could um, I um, bring this to council's um, attention? Um, like I said, his group was already working with someone in Dover. Um, that would be all. Thank you. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Councilman Johnson. Uh, I, I would like to be added as a co-sponsor as well. Um, this is long overdue. Um, I know it's been looked at for years, kind of loosening those old blue laws um, that exist. Um, because on the hand, we do need to curb liquor stores. But um, the extent in the hospitality industry and supporting that industry should be vital importance for the continued growth of the city. And I'm someone who, you know, I, I, I grew up I grew up in Philadelphia and, you know, we're used to 2 a.m. And, you know, it's just, you know, young, um, you know, young adults that have the opportunity or older folks who want to be out to 2 or 3 a.m. as long as they do it safely. So I believe to continue growing as a city um, is necessary, um, even at the beach, you know, when you go down there, you know, places should be open till 2 a.m. It's just, you know, the way it is, um, you know, New, New Jersey has the, those laws in most places. So. Um, I think it's a natural step in the growth of Wilmington and Delaware in general. So whatever we can do to get that over, uh, we, we definitely need to because it's been a long time coming. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Fields. Yes, thank you, Council President. I would just like to be added as a co-sponsor. I said on my um, comments in the committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Darby. Yes, thank you. I wanted to make sure I was added as a co-sponsor. I think I asked in a committee meeting, but just for the council meeting, I just want to say for like retention of young people in the city um, to live here, work here, and to um, enjoy the nightlife. I think this is really needed. So I am in full support um, of this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Any final comments, Councilman Councilwoman Oliver? Um, I see. I see um, Councilman uh, Maria saying up. Oh, okay, thank you. Councilman Maria. Sorry, sorry, Mr. President. I was a little quick there with that hand um, at the last minute. Yes, I um, also support this. I believe I did ask in committee to be a co-sponsor. You know, we have our neighboring uh, states, Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have borders with all of them. Obviously, the easiest one to go to is Pennsylvania. So we do lose a lot of our people who decide when they go out, they just want to extend their night and stay out till two. And it's not just the young people. Some of the older folks as well want to go out and have a good time. And, you know, it does bring revenue by keeping those hours later into the city, into the state. It does help us keep a viable, active audience here. They do business and they're not just drinking, they're, they're eating, they're spending money. And it's just good to stay closer to home instead of having to drive out of state 
um, to be out an hour longer. So it is, it is good legislation. And I do hope that the state uh, takes a look at that. I think we're probably one of the few states um, who have these hours, um, at least in this tri-state regional area, the metropolitan area. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Oliver. Any last comments? Thank you, uh, Mr. President. No, just for a note of record, uh, for, um, so council members can note, this is optional. Um, we did have an outstanding torrent of, re of, of support, um, but um, a few of them said, no, they were happy to close at 12 o'clock or they were happy to close at one. But one thing they did respect about it, this is optional. If you don't want to stay open, if you want to close your regular hours, you can. It just gives the, um, the um, allows the uh, bars or restaurants to stay open if they're and they're cleaning up and they don't have to rush and lock their door. There could be that just if they have a band in there that's cleaning up and just to, you know, not be paranoid about letting them clean up and take their time leaving. So as I stated, the main um, word here is optional. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Clerk. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Darby. Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Brigida Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. President Cangle? Yes. Penny and three absent. Declare adopted. Uh, Mr. President, um, I have an ordinance to present and call for the, a third and final reading. Ordinance 22018, Agenda 0155, an ordinance to amend Chapter 13 of the City Code to increase civil penalties for commercial establishments committing health and sanitation violations. Uh, Mr. President, I uh, move this be known as an enacting clause uh, of the ordinance and call for a yay and a vote. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that, that that be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and call for a yay and a vote on the question. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Um, uh, myself and um, Councilman Spadola have been working on this with uh, for months with um, uh, Jeff Starkey uh, from LNI, uh, and this uh, uh, this ordinance established an increase in penalties for apartment buildings, commercial establishments, and it also uh, fixes uh, telegraphical areas and areas in Section 13 for uh, a. Um, so the ordinance will provide approximately 200,000 in additional revenue uh, to the city based on protection of fines um, issued to apartment buildings and commercial establishments. Um, and as I stated, I'd like to uh, thank co-sponsor James Padola for working with me and Jeff um, Starkey for months to try to um, make sure uh, it affects the people who we were having issues with. Thank you. Councilman Spadola. Thank you, Council President. And thank, thank you, Councilwoman Oliver. Uh, yes, this is a much needed piece of legislation. Um, you know, the trash is a major problem in the city. And I think we've got a lot, there's a handful of uh, bad landlords that have apartment buildings that are big contributors to it. And, uh, you know, I've dealt with a handful. And uh, I think this will be another tool in the toolbox for LNI. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Gray. Thank you. I just want to uh, thank the two sponsors for working on this because I agree trash is a great problem. And on major thoroughfares like Market Street, I have community members continually co complaining about the trash on public street and especially on businesses, large businesses. So um, I haven't totally read this, but anything that will help us um, make the owners or the managers keep their properties clean, I support. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Fields. Yes, thank you, Council President. I would just um, like to say that uh, this is a good piece of legislation. 
Um, I have plenty of apartment buildings and I have Adams for, um, and I'm not going to name the apartments, but you know, they don't, they don't have their uh, trash. They don't have their trash bins covered. So when you're coming down, um, when you're coming down the street, you can see all of the trash. So one side you have, um, with the Martin Luther King Boulevard, the next side you have um, Second Street and, you know, and you have Fourth Street and different things like that. So I really, really um, like this piece of legislation. Um, if I could be added as a co-sponsor, I really would like to be. Um, I've had this conversation with Mr. Starkey as well as um, his inspectors as well. And they have been working with me uh, when it comes to um, getting this done. So this this is my... Um, push the process further along. So thank you, Councilwoman Oliver and Councilman Spadola um, for working on this piece of legislation. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes, I too would like to request to be added to this um, legislation if I haven't already. And of course, you know, we have people that would comment about how clean Wilmington would look compared to so many other cities, but that has been changing dramatically in the last few years. I mean, aside from the people who just drive by and throw things out the window um, and think that the world, that the streets are their trash can, I, I don't understand. I've never understood littering. As a young child, we always just learn to, you know, pick up, clean up, um, and it it's bad. So holding people accountable, at least in this matter, stops some from that, stops a lot of that trash from hitting our streets. The wind blows, we have bad weather, it's everywhere. And not to mention the work that our sanitation workers have to do when they're out there picking up this mess. I mean, it's just horrible. I, I mean, I commend them and that is just a thankless job. So this is a good piece of legislation. Um, and yes, we need to hold, have accountability and keep our city clean. People want to live in clean cities and it'll draw more people to our city and, and just change the whole outlook. Very positive for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to be added as a co-sponsor. And uh, Councilman Oliver, any last comments? No, Mr. President, thank you. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Darby. Yes. Councilwoman Oliver. Yes. Councilwoman Fields. Yes. Councilwoman McCoy. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Mills. Yes. Councilman Spadola. Yes. President Cargo. Yes. 11 yeas and two absent. Say it about it. Councilman Oliver, you may continue. You're muted. Councilman Oliver, I believe you're muted. Uh, yeah. Yep, I hit it by mistake. I'm sorry. Um, yes, Mr. President, I have an ordinance uh, to present and call for the third and final reading. Ordinance 22024, agenda 0167, an ordinance to authorize and approve an extension of contract 20011 PW sewer maintenance between the City of Wilmington and Brandywine Construction Company, Inc. I move mean, this um, be known as the enacting clause in the ordinance to call for a yay, nay vote. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. This be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and called for a yay and a vote on the question. Yes, uh, Mr. President, this ordinance has been presented uh, by the administration. Uh, it's a house case, keep in peace. Um, the ordinance um, is authorizing the city to enter into an extension um, of contract of 2001. Um, this is for a sewer and maintenance between the city of Wilmington and Brandywine Construction Company, Inc. That provides a two uh, one year extension of the contract for period July the 1st, 2022 through June the 30th, 2023 and July 2023 through July, June the 24th, 2024. Okay, seeing no hands raised from council. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yeah. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. 
Council Long Fields. Yes. Council Long McCoy. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Field. Yes. Councilman Alfredo. Yes. Councilman Mills. Yes. Councilman Spadola. Councilman Spadola is still on. President Congo. Yes. 10 yeas and three absent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, um, I have another ordinance present and call for the third and final reading. Ordinance 22025 agenda 0168 in order to authorize and approve an electricity procurement contract starting in fiscal year 2023. Yeah, Mr. President, I move this be known as an enact and cause in the ordinance and call for a yay nay vote. Second. If can properly moved and seconded, that that be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and called for a yay nay vote on the question. Yes, uh, Mr. President, this is an ordinance being presented by the administration to review and approval uh, to authorize the city to enter into uh, one or more contracts uh, for the purchase of electricity with one or more or four electric providers starting in the fiscal year 2023 for the term not to exceed five years. Okay, seeing no questions from council, clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Yes. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Councilman Spadola. Council President Congo. Yes. 10 yeas and three absent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a resolution um, to present on your behalf. Resolution 22032, Agenda 0184, whereas in accordance with Section 2104 of the City Charter, City Council shall provide for such committees as it deems necessary, and whereas City Council deems it desirable to update the personnel assignments for its standing committees for the 108th Council session. And I move this resolution be received, recorded, and signed, adopted by the NA vote. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by yay nay vote on the question. Yes, Mr. President. This resolution amends um, resolution uh, number 22-001 to update the personnel assignment for the session 108 uh, uh, session of the City of Wilmington Standing Committees appointed um, council member Albert Mills to the Education and Youth and Family Service Committee. Okay, seeing no hands raised, clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Present. Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Nathan Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Councilman Spadola? President Congo? Yes. Eight yeas, three absent, and one present. Declared adopted. Mr. President, I have a uh, one more uh, last resolution present to present on your behalf. 
Resolution 22033, Agenda 0185, whereas Section 2369 of the City Code requires grants awarded by the Mayor, City Council, or the City Treasurer in the amount of 5000 or more to be approved by resolution of City Council. And whereas City Council wishes to award a grant to the Morris Foundation, Children's I Health, and Health. Resolution DBC, recorded and finally adopted by a and vote. Second. It's been properly moved and second that this resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by yay and a vote on the question. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. President, this resolution approves a grant by the city council to the Morris Foundation, uh, the, ch uh, the children's health, an amount of 13500 to assist the families of 27 units at Adam Street that were displaced. Thank you, Councilman Oliver. Second. Thank you. Second. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, many councilmen have expressed our desire to help the families that were. And first, I want I want to thank uh, Jessica uh, Gibson Brokenbow Brokenbow for uh, reaching out to me. She is, she is there. She is in the Moore's community outreach, li outreach liaison. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to uh, collaborate just to be able to help those families. And they are matching our $13,500. Uh, and the, these funds will be made available directly um, you know, to, to help the residents. They won't have to go through a lot of red tape. Uh, so I just want to thank Jessica and the Moore and um, my council member. It's far from uh, enough, but it is a it is a start, and um, just look for, look forward to being able to help the residents in the future even more. Uh, Councilman Gray, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think this is wonderful, and hopefully there will be a press release because I continually get um, about what's being done. And I think that once they find out that we are doing something, even though it took a week or so, but um, it takes time. To help people. So I hopefully that this will be put out in the press so that people will realize this. And I think this is a wonderful thing that we're partnering with New Morris. Thank you. Thank you. You're seeing no other hands raised. Uh, no, Mr. President, I, I went, I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand. I thought I could say no. I, I too would like to thank Jessica who um, I spoke to regarding some assistance. So I'd like to thank you and the council for taking the initiative to um, assist with the families on Adams Street. Um, thank you. Thank you. Clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. Spadola? <clears throat> President Congo? Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declared adopted. I believe that council member Cabrera is going to present on behalf of Councilwoman Harley. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a resolution to present. Yes. Resolution 22 034, agenda 0186. Whereas City Charter Section 1101 provides that the city may acquire, hold, manage, and dispose of property on such terms as it deems proper for any municipal purpose. And whereas City Charter Section 2621A provides that the sale by resolution declare property approved for disposition and authorize the conduct of disposition proceedings by Department of Real Estate and Housing. I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed, and adopted by a yay and nay vote. Second. 
It's been properly moved and seconded that this resolution be received, recorded, followed, and adopted by yay and a vote on the question. Yes, Mr. President, this resolution is being presented by the administration for council's review and approval. The resolution declares 105 South Market Street, Wilmington, Delaware, tax parcel ID number 26-043.00-009 to be surplus and approves the property for disposition to the Riverfront Development Corporation, as well as the acceptance by the city of certain utility easements to maintain access to the property. No. Well, you need a second? No, I've been seconded. We're waiting for um, president. Uh. You can hear us? Windows, is something wrong with the mic? I think the president dropped off, but he should be back. President Congo? Since we lost him, um, okay. <laughs> so, to say if any council members have their hands or they want to make any comments, President, are you back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now, uh huh. You know. Dropped off again. Maria? Does anyone have their hand raised that wants to speak on this? Yeah. Any council members? Yeah. If not, then. No. Uh, Clerk, can we call for a roll for a vote? Councilwoman Gray. Present. Councilwoman Darby. Councilwoman Oliver. Yes. Councilwoman Field. Yes. Councilwoman McCoy. Present. Councilman Johnson. Yeah. Councilman Nathan Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Mills. Yes. Councilman Spadola. President Cago. He's muted. Okay. President Congo, can you hear us? You are muted. Hi. He's unmuted now. Okay. I can you hear me. Yes. Yes. We're voting on the resolution that just we just spoke about twenty two oh thirty four. Is your vote a yes or a no? No. For the disposition for Harley. No. That's seven yeas, one nay, four absent, and one present. Mr. President, I have a okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a resolution to present. Second. Just a moment. Have we got it now? It's an. Are you doing Harley's? Because it's an ordinance. Are you doing Harley's next piece? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's an ordinance to present. Okay, let me go back. Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present and call for the first and second reading. Thank you so much. In ordinance twenty two zero twenty eight, agenda zero one eight seven, in ordinance to include a street. A Street between North Market Street and North Walnut Street in a residential parking zone. First reading of the ordinance. In order to include A Street between North Market Street and North Walnut Street in a residential parking zone. Mr. President, I move that be known as the first and second, second reading of the reading of the ordinance. I'm sorry. Mr. President, I move that be known as the first and second reading of the ordinance and refer refer it to the Public Works and Transportation Committee. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that be known as the first and second reading of the ordinance and refer to the Public Works and Transportation Committee. Uh, 
I have nothing else on behalf of Councilwoman Harley. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Fields. We didn't vote on the ordinance, did we? Oh, first and second, I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention, I'm sorry. Councilmember Fields. I don't um I don't have anything, Mr. President. Are you Thank calling you. a field? No, Councilmember McCoy. Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Councilmember Johnson. No, I didn't tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilmember Field. Mr. President, I have an ordinance to present and call for the third and final reading. Ordinance 22021, Agenda 0159, in order to accept a dedication of a private street that extends in a northwest direction from the 24th. Mr. President, I move that be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and call for the yay and nay vote. Mr. Nathan feels I need to read the whole title. One moment, please. In order to accept a dedication of a private street that extends in a northwest direction from the 2400 block of Riddle Avenue, add the street to the official city map and name the street as Riddle Avenue. Thank you. Mr. President, I move that be known as the enacting clause of the ordinance and call for the yay and nay vote. Second. Enacting clause of the ordinance and call on the question. Yes, Mr. President, this is simply a, this is a, there's a street, Riddle Avenue, and there it, it's an existing street and the developer built a series of homes and is, is asking and, and has created a private street and they're asking that, that that be taken over by the city as an official city street. They've done all their homework. They've, they've gone to the homeowners association, gotten approval and also worked with public works and the mayor's office. And so everybody is on board with this being turned over as an official city street. Okay, thank you. Seeing no one has raised from council. Clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Nathan Field? Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera? Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. President Congo? Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. You're muted, President Congo. Okay, Maria, what are we doing? Uh, he seems to be on, but just muted. Mr. President, you're muted. Well. I think it's some place where they don't have good reception. Okay. Exactly. All right. So that last piece needs to be declared it, adopted. Back in. Excuse me. That last piece needs to be declared adopted for agenda 0159 for Councilman Field. It has been declared and adopted. Thank you. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. President, we can hear you now. Next, please. I'm, I'm next, Mr. President, and I have uh, an ordinance to present and call for the first and second reading. Mm -hmm. Third and final, it says. Mm. I'm sorry, third and final reading. Ordinance 22022, agenda 0160, in order to authorize and approve a one-year extension of contract 22004 LI between the City of Wilmington and RNA Contractors LLC for vacant property services.
on the question? No, you need to move it. Okay. Oh, I need to move it. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. President, I move that that be known as the third and final reading of the ordinance. Second. I refer it to the Community Development and Urban Planning Committee. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong script. Mm -hmm. the, Mr. President, I, I move that that be known as the third and final reading. Second. You're playing two roles, Maria. Continue. I know it's hard. <laughs> That's why I'm. We heard the president move it. Okay. On a question. Maria, he said on a question. Okay, on the question. This ordinance is being presented by the administration for council's review and approval. This ordinance authorizes the city to exercise a one year extension option to contract 22004L1 vacant property services with RNA contractors LLC. For the time period of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Basically, we're going to continue to do work with this vendor who goes out and cleans up the properties and maintains the vacant lots and the vacant properties that are throughout the city so that they are not unsightly and cause a hindrance or a nuisance to uh, the neighborhoods where those properties are located or lots. Okay, my hand's up. Since you, um, my only question, is this a minority contractor and is this the only contract that takes care of um, vacant properties? He is a minority contractor and he uh, is the person who has been doing the work. So we are renewing his, giving him a one-year extension on the contract. Is he the only person, that, the only contract that does that? I'm sure he's not. Of uh, The other contractors bid and he's the one that won the bid. Oh, okay. So this, this didn't go out to bid, it's being extended, but he did win the bid the first time around. Okay, thank you. I just thought we might have two or three contractors working throughout the city, but we only have one. We only have one, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Councilman Oliver? Yes, um, I just would like to say, um, I, I, I know this contractor has really been doing an outstanding job, but Reverend Keeley, um, Central Baptist, they also do some work also, but this was the guy, like you said, who won the bid, who's been doing it, but I just, I just see his team up there doing an outstanding job. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other council member of hands raised. Any final comments from the sponsor? No, Mr. President. Thank you, Clerk. Please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Darby? Councilwoman Oliver? Yes. Councilwoman Fields? Present. Who just stated that? Who was that? That was Councilwoman Darby. Darby. Councilwoman Brigida Fields. Councilwoman McCoy. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yeah. Brigida Fields. Councilman Nathan Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Brigida, does she hear you? Councilman Nils. Yes. Councilman Spadola. President Congo. Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declared adopted. Mr. President, if I can just state that council members need to state for the record that they're being excused on the record. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. For the, not just for the record, but for the view and audience, because I'm, I'm losing track who I need to call on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President, I have a resolution to present. Resolution 22035, Agenda 0188, whereas recent findings have found that gender-based price discrimination for car insurance disproportionately affects women despite driving histories identical to their male counterparts. 
Senate Bill number 231 will remove gender as a factor in determining car insurance premiums to end the trend of unfair insurance premiums. SB number 231 is in alignment with the research findings and policy recommendations of the Delaware Department of Insurance. And whereas Title 21 2218 mandates. I move this resolution be received, recorded, and filed and adopted by a yay and nay vote. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Did that resolution be received, recorded, filed, and adopted by a yay and nay vote on the question? Uh, Mr. President, uh, it basically is very clear that the use of gender, gender identity, or sex should not be used as a rating factor when determining the price of car insurance. Uh, it, it should matter. I mean, I remember back in the day when men had the worst records and women are supposed to have the best records. So I'm not understanding why women are paying more for car insurance than the men. At this point, it should be equal all the way across. Um, and there shouldn't be any rating factors other than the way that you drive and if you're a high risk driver or not. So this resolution does support that. And I am very happy to sponsor this and thank the General Assembly for also having this before them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor and seeing no hands raised from council. Clerk, please call for the roll. Councilwoman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Darby. Councilman Oliver. Yes, and I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. So my phone was on mute. I'm sorry. Councilwoman Fields. Yes, and can I please be added as a co-sponsor as well? Yes, Council that's fine. Councilwoman McCoy. Yes. Councilwoman, excuse me, Councilman Johnson. Yeah. Councilman Field. Yes. Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Mills? Yes. President Congo? Yes. Nine yeas and four absent. Declare adopted. Any more legislation, Council Member Correa? That is all for this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Council Member Mills? Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will move to petitions and communications, starting with Council Member Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I really have nothing tonight. Just tell people to be safe and that I am very sorry, and I'm sure everyone's tired of saying that they're sorry and the prayers are with the, um, the family members of the children that died, but um, that's all we can say right now. And uh, be safe. That's it. Good night. Thank you, Mr. President. Good night. Thank you. Councilmember Oliver. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, um, first, I, I, I would like to make a statement. I was off uh, for the resolutions because um, the North Side had a meeting that was in conflict. Um, I like to say the store on 23rd and Pine has been closed down. Today's the second day from so much negativity that they um, create in our neighborhoods and never get back. Um, so I was glad to, um, you know, Bottom line, they're closed down and hopefully, and over there today, the community came out on the corner, was just glad it was a peace of mind. Um, you ride through there, it's constant traffic and it's constant negativity. And evidently it was taking place in the store. And I think um, all of us as council members need to be uh, aware of some of these corner stores that is constantly laudering around. I mean, talking to an officer to say, officer today who made a, a good point that why, why I don't any of these stores, I mean, not talking about we want anybody to get robbed, but nothing ever happens to these stores that is so much um, laudering and negativity around. And that area used to always be a nice, you know, area, even though I know a lot of people have passed away and, um, and um, people who have, you know, are elderly now, but the bottom line is individuals around there who don't live around there. And that's what bothers me the most. So I'm just glad that um, the liquor, I mean, I'm sorry, not the liquor, that, um, L and I was very instrumental in getting that store closed down. I don't know how long it's going to be closed down, but I'm glad that they had a Zoom call and I'm glad I was over there to support them. I mean, we have to stop supporting these corner stores that do nothing in our community. And I'm going to elaborate on that. But next, I would like to make an announcement 
Saturday, um, Newcastle County is having a big event in Prices Park from 12 to 4. Um, it's a health fair. It's a health and block fair. Doc B will be there DJ, and we got Best Kept Soul and also uh, Richard Roll. So that's Newcastle County. I'm glad to co sponsor that. I'm glad to have it in Prices Park. So it sounds like they're going to have. 40 vendors out there. Uh, you can get your blood pressure taken and just a uh, regular health, uh, just a regular health fair. But in the midst of people being able to be serviced, um, they are going to have some um, entertainment out there. So if anybody wants to come out Saturday, I know it's a lot going on, but anytime between 12 and floor, 12 and four, we will have a, a, a block uh, a health fair and a party at, um, Clifford, I mean, over Pricey's Park. I'm sorry, I said a lot going on tonight. Thanks a lot. And good meeting. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you. I'm sorry. And I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Mills for being added to that um, educational youth and families because you work with the youth and I can see you being very instrumental and in, in, um, in on that committee. Thank you. I'm done, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Fields. Yes, Mr. President. Um, I just want to um, announce again that on Saturday the 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., there will be a home buyers um, workshop at William Hicks Anderson Community Center. Um, they can um, either reach out to me um, but there's a flyer going out. Um, let me give you the number. Hold on. I thought I had it up. My, my apologies. Okay. Um, they can call. It's a toll-free number. So if they need to register or would like to register, 1-425-602-6200. Um, Again, this is Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at William Hicks Anderson Community Center, 501 North Madison Street, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, this home buyers workshop, it works um, at no down payment, no closing costs, no fees, below market, fixed rates, no perfect credit needed. And um, it's not, um, what is it? Um, it doesn't go by your income. So, um, and I just want to let you know that we do have over 250 people that have already registered. So I'm looking for a really good turnout. Um, and uh, I thank you, Mr. President. And, you know, I got a quote. So my quote today is, we need to do things better, but in a way that it makes sense. And that is by Nan Hayworth. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Councilman McCord. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, actually, I don't really have that much to say. Oh, just wanted to remind people that we actually do have the um, the Dart on the Go bus. I'm um, sorry, the DMV on the Go bus is at the um, the Dart building on Lower Beach Street. This bus, um, this trailer, basically is has all of the services that the DMV uh, normally does at their. Uh, at the location off of 13 it's just that it's something that's very convenient for the uh the for the residents of wilmington this is something i've actually um this is a, a group that i've invited on two different occasions to come to the city of wilmington to make it a little easier for people to get like their dmv services done and now we have them here on a weekly basis they are here every tuesday at the uh the dart building off of lower beach and maryland avenue and they are at 10 a.m to 2 p.m so uh the the past two times I've gone by there, I haven't really seen anyone there. And I didn't want it to be a special occasion where we had to put out flyers just for people to take advantage of that. Um, of that, uh, It's not an event, but actually, you know, that convenience. Um, I do want to also applaud um, Councilman Oliver, uh, which he had to deal with when it came to the store. This is something I had to deal with a few weeks ago. Um, we finally managed to get something done with a store that was in my area. And I appreciate the fact that the store owners 
once they were closed down, they were closed down for like a week. Their uh, their livelihood was taken for a complete week. And once they got everything in order and opened back up, they were determined not to allow all that loitering take place. So I just hope that, you know, uh, that you all, you just have whatever is the best benefit for the community over there when it comes to that store, whether or not it be closed down for good or, you know, some changes be made. You know, I said, because uh, we do see what's going on. Please understand that your council people see what's going on. And we have to use the law, you know, in order to make these changes. You know, you just cannot come and kick a door down and be like, stop doing this. So um, I just congratulate you for getting that done. Um, oh, last thing I just want to say, because it'll probably be already, it'll be over by the time we get back for our next meeting, is congratulations to my son, Avery McCoy Jr., because he will be graduating from Nativity next week. Uh, he will be stepping up from eighth grade to uh, high school to ninth grade. So uh, congratulations, baby. Um, you've grown a lot. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Councilman Johnson. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Just as a um, just as a friendly reminder, uh, the Finance and Economic Development Committee has our uh, first post-budget uh, meeting um, this upcoming Monday, uh, June 6th at 5 p.m. Uh, there's a pretty robust agenda, as always. And uh, you know, now that we've passed the city budget, uh, we move on to focus on any other uh, you know important, pressing issues for the city. So I hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Field. Yes, Mr. President. I, I just want to, to any of my constituents that may be listening, I, every two months I, I put out a newsletter. I, I sit down and write a newsletter on updates on whatever the most critical issues are taking place in our district in that period. And I send it out every two months. And if there's anybody listening that would like to receive it, please call me or text me at 302-530-6626. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Carrera. Yes, Mr. President. Um, first, I want to congratulate again St. Paul's as they celebrate their 150th anniversary. They do have a gala this Saturday, but it is sold out, uh, but wanted to congratulate them again. On June 11th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., there is a gun violence forum, uh, which is um, being put together by a, a select group of leaders. Uh, this information was sent to me by Pastor Margaret uh, Guy, the Stop the Violence Prayer Chain. She will be there, as will be Bishop Billy Lane Jr. with Christian Growth Ministry. Our Lieutenant Governor will be there. Our esteemed Council President will also be there and uh, a few other folks are gonna be there. So June 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's gonna be held at 103 Rogers Road, Wilmington, Delaware. And there's gonna be raffles, vendors, face painting, a balance house, um, CGM praise team, true, true Music will be in the house. And also DJ Tim Dog. And there's another organization, I just can't make out their name. I think uh, the Violence Intervention, intervention Wilmington, so I hope um, to see folks out there as we continue the discussion. And this Sunday at 2 p.m. at Trinity Episcopal Church, uh, the corners of Delaware Avenue and Adams Street, uh, the Moms Demand Action will have uh, their ceremony. I participated last year and it is uh, very moving. Uh, the Community Development and Urban Planning Committee is gonna meet next Thursday at 5 p.m. via Zoom. And um, I am happy and sad at the same time, the baby boy is uh, 18 years old now and graduating from high school. So that is happening this weekend. So our little Vincent, which many of you have watched grow up throughout the years at all the public events with me. So I do wanna congratulate uh, my son. It's not an easy task being a parent these days and keeping our kids in school and watching them graduate. So for those that um, are able to make it through, especially everything we've gone through with the pandemic, um, it, it is uh, to all the parents out there, to all the graduates, it's that time of year where we celebrate these happy moments um, 
definitely congratulate everyone. And we wanna keep these moments happy. And with that said, I would like to at least take, you know, five or 10 seconds of the rest of my time to just have a moment of silence for the victims of all these um, shootings that we have experienced nationwide and also for those that happen in our city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, my colleagues. Okay, thank you. Council Member Mills. Yes, Mr. President, I just want to say thank you to the other colleagues for allowing me to become part of the Education Youth and Families Committee. And another uh, shout out to all the graduates and their families as well. Big congratulations. It's graduation time. So to all the seniors and all the hard work, keep it up as many more graduations to come. And thank you. Thank you, Council Member Walsh. I believe she was excused, Mr. President. Yeah, I still see her arm. Just wanted to give her an opportunity if she did have anything to say. Sorry. Okay, and with that, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. So moved. If I'm popping, move, if I'm popping, move a second to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everyone who joined us virtually. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.